All right. Well, without further ado, Mr. Cam Anderson, Blacktail Studios, welcome. Thanks, man. Appreciate you having me. Hey, man. We're, we're glad to have you. Uh, I, I kind of prefaced it that you started out uh, from basically nothing, and uh, I'd like to hear your story about that, just basically just a brief rundown of how you got started. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my my former life, I was a helicopter pilot. I talked to, to you earlier about flying down the Gulf of Mexico and then moved back up to Oregon to work for the air ambulance, the life flight. And that was when I moved in with my now wife, uh, moved back up here and we bought a house and had a big shop. It was like a 1500 square foot shop on like not a huge house. The guy was an auto mechanic before and I worked seven days on, then I had seven days back at home and I'm like, I need a hobby. I need something to do with all this time. And I got a big shop and I'd never taken woodworking seriously, but I was like, ah, buy buy a couple tools. And I started doing it and making stuff that was pretty bad. And I wanted to buy more tools. And so uh, my wife's like, why don't you start selling stuff? I'm like, you think so? And so just kind of started making poor, low quality stuff and trying to get a little bit better each time. And eventually, you know, made a couple sales and started social media and here I am today. So I had read, I believe it's on your website, maybe uh, about you were, when you first started, your wife kind of gave you the, the kick in the pants confidence you needed uh, to get started. And we see that a lot too. And, and I struggle with it too. I did and still do sometimes on the confidence to basically take that first leap. Was she a, a big driving factor in that? You know, she's, she's been a, a good factor. I always, I, I joke in some of my videos that if you want to become a better woodworker, get a wife and some people don't like this term, but this is what I've said is get a wife with OCD. Cause she kind of comes out and is like, Oh, what's wrong with this? Or why is this like this? And I'm like, I don't know. Cause it was lazy. <laughs> and then you like, all right, next time I'm going to make it a little bit better and a little bit better. And so she did encourage me, but she also kind of held me accountable. It was never like patting me on the head. It was always like, Oh, that's, that's okay. I'm trying <laughs> to get it a little bit better. Uh -uh. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's the same way. I, I have built stuff before, uh, where I didn't do something just right. And she's like mm -hmm, for her. And she's like, uh, change it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um it's it's good to have that though it's good to have that i really think it is i have some friends that um i mean god bless them because their wives you know are adorable but they tell them what they shouldn't hear from as it from a business perspective at least yeah and you know they tell them everything's perfect and, that, and i'm kind of like really yeah, we're all right, all right. <laughs> that's good to have a little challenge though it is it is i'm so ocd uh, she's always pushed me to to push myself where you know i to take that leap to, to try harder, you know, and I, I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. So you said you was a pilot. Has any of that pilot training or anything that you experienced as a pilot translated into your business in any way? You know, I, I, I would probably make a better interview if I said yes, but no, <laughs> like none of it. It, uh, I, I never felt like <clears throat> pilot was my calling, you know, people, Oh, did you grow up wanting to do this or that? I was like, no, like, just kind of thought it'd be a fun job. And it was like, I did it for, you know, a little over 10 years, but it wasn't until I started doing this that I was like, you know, kind of cliche of like, this is what I was meant to do, but I'd never felt like passionate about anything before doing this. So that was always just a job to me. This is something I feel like I really enjoy doing. So do you still fly or do you just, you surely you kept your pilot's license up, right? So it doesn't go away, but you need to stay current if you want to go, fly people around and no, I, I don't have any desire to go fly. Really? You know, it's, I mean, you do it enough, you know, yeah. thousands of hours. It's like, it, it was fine, but it just was, it's just going up and down. So no, I'm not going to keep I guess going. It's, after a while, it's probably like just driving a car or something. Yeah, exactly. My, my dad made a joke once when I had to go take a helicopter out and they're like, do whatever you want with it. We just got to put time on it. And my dad's like, oh, it must've been so much fun. And I was like, eh. and he's like, I guess it is kind of like someone throwing me the keys to a Tacoma. You know, <laughs> go drive it around. Like you just what are you gonna do? Flying around. That's, That's funny. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Underwood has a question. He says, "How long?" And he's asking you and Cam, "How long did it take you to recoup all of your investments in your business?" We'll let Cam go first. So yeah, I started. I didn't have like a set number, but it was probably around a thousand bucks. I probably you know that I was out. You know, bought like a. Craigslist rigid table saw, you know, rigid sander, maybe even a little less than a thousand. Um, and I, I honestly don't know, probably a few, I don't know, six months or something to get that back. And everything since then has been just with profits. 
What about you? Um, so I started with borrowed tools. I borrowed from my father-in-law and my dad. And then, so the first thing I saw was just profit, I guess. And then from there, I started buying tools with the profit. That's kind of mm-hmm. the same way. We, we didn't um, go in debt trying to buy tools or anything mm-hmm. like that. I would just make things and sell it. And then when I got the money, I would buy whatever I needed. Yep. Yeah. Still kind of worked that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. I think I think it's a good business strategy for for especially if you're just starting on the side because I didn't jump into the full time and I'm not even a full time woodworker now I'm more of a full time content creator you're a full time woodworker and full time content creator so I think it's a little a little different but I think it's a good it's a good strategy I think and I think you said pallet instead of pallet or they said pa- you oh, my, you're saying pallet but your accent says pallet yeah. he was <laughs> like a, a wood helicopter pallet, so. pilot, not there a helicopter go. pallet there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ken and John Woodworking, for letting us know <laughs> that we sound Southern. <laughs> we, we, t- we talked briefly about, on the members only, about your how you ship large items. You said you'd actually shipped a, a table to Little Rock from Oregon, where you're from. Uh, can you? We get this question all the time. Is how do you ship large items? Is there any the tips or tricks that you're using that you could share with people? I, I actually do. Have, I got some, some really good tips for you. Um, I had a... An old video, I think even a blog on like how I build my crates. There, I, I've been one of my biggest compliments. I feel like I got from a customer. She told me that I build a beautiful crate, and it's kind of satisfying. And you know, when it when it arrives there, like I build it basically around the table. And the video or blog will go into that. And then I use that foam insulation sheets from Home Depot, so it's kind of guarded on all sides, and everything just fits in there perfectly. And then the the best tip for it is I started using a freight broker. I use freightquote.com and basically Old Dominion is the best carrier right now. And I used freight quote the first time everything went well. So the next time I said, I'll just call Old Dominion directly and probably save some money. I called them. They said it was going to be like a thousand bucks. I was like, wow, that seems expensive. So I went to freight quote again to maybe get a different carrier. And the Old Dominion price through freight quote was like $400. <laughs> so they, they get those big brokerage, whatever, uh, price breaks. So using a broker like that, um, and then just building a really good quality crate, it's, it's all pretty easy. So the average, give or take average price on the shipping, I guess it depends on where it's going, how far it's going, all that, I would assume. Um, it, it, it's, it really varies by the season and where it's going and like COVID things were crazy. This last one was actually really reasonable. At least I thought it was, um, it was, Six hundred dollars plus like two hundred some for the insurance, so a little a little over eight hundred bucks, which I was happy with. That would have probably been closer to eighteen hundred last year. Really, mm-hmm. I would assume you always buy insurance. I, I force them to now. I, I used to give clients the option. Now I just tell them that's the price. Four three two one uh, posted the link to Cam's oh, blog on it. Also, thank you. Uh, Four three two one. Awesome. Thank you. So it is on your blog. I'm sure you can search. Blacktail Studio, how to build a crate, and it'll probably show up. It's uh, his blog on shipping slash crate. Uh, Mike Kipper wants to know what was the first project you built. Uh, the first project I built in my modern woodworking era, like when I was a kid, we'd build like fish tank stands. Like my, me and my buddies were into like lizards and stuff, so we'd build those. But oh. those were just had two by fours. Uh, I one of my reasons I got into the woodworking is I met a guy that was making these pallet geometric tables. And he told me he'd made like $55,000 the year before doing that. And I'm like, get the, (laughs) I want that. So I'm like, I'll build a pallet table. And so I did, I put it on Etsy and it actually sold in like a week. I was like blown away. I said, put it up for like 300 bucks. Said it was free shipping because I didn't, I don't know, said thought you were supposed to do that. (laughs) Shipping was like $180 on it. So uh, wasn't a huge money maker, but that was my first sale. That's awesome. That is funny. So how, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say 4321 has uh, put a couple of more links on there if y'all okay. need to go in and look at it. So how did you transfer? How trans- translate from pallet tables to river resin tables? So I'd, I'd seen some online and I was like, I think that'd be kind of fun to try that. And I didn't do any research at all. There wasn't a ton of information out there back then in my, in my defense, but I also didn't even read the instructions on the bottle. And taped up a couple pieces of alders, like cheapest wood I could find, poured all this boat epoxy in at once, like an inch thick. It started leaking everywhere. I'm trying to patch it up. Finally, I got it stopped and it started smoking because it was, I poured way too much. I didn't know you couldn't pour epoxy like super thick. And so it almost catches on fire. 
and my wife's out there watching me do this. She's like, did you even read the instructions? I'm like, eh, I thought I had it figured what out. What instructions? Yeah. And so that was my first oh, resin God, table. Um, and I had to, I ended up redoing it and it actually kind of looked good in photos, but it was not, I stained the wood. I didn't, I did everything wrong. So that yeah. was my first resin table. Live and learn though. We still have epoxy on our garage floor where he made a mess and yep. almost caught just, some stuff on fire. Just, yeah. just, just one pile of epoxy? Because that's pretty good for... <laughs> I don't know what else is well, out there. Look, I've just seen this one because he was trying to get out the door with it. Well, what happened was I had it mixed up in a what cup. What happened was you didn't read those instructions. No, I didn't. <laughs> and I set it by the garage door and then I was started working on it. I looked over and it was smoking and the, the yeah, bucket yeah. had melted and it was going mm -hmm. everywhere. So mm -hmm. I was like, sure. hmm. I got the Dominic has a question for you. Right. He says, is the DeWalt 734 planer still a good buy with the one to two month shipping time? Um, maybe if it's still on a good sale. It just depends on the price. It's a long time to wait, though. You probably find a better deal before then, I would think. Cobra Pup says, uh, which he said his favorite two woodworkers are on here tonight, so that's, that's cool. He says, uh, he's curious, why does he hear so much hate on epoxy? Uh, why, do I, why do I, they want my opinion on why I get so much hate on epoxy? No, why, yeah, why, why there's, why in general, people hate epoxy? Hate, hate <laughs> I, I actually, I think I know the answer to this. I think I, I have a good theory, and I don't blame the people that, that do it, is I think that it's just not the thing that a lot of woodworkers are into. And because it's so popular in the community, they mm -hmm. don't have any choice and they get inundated with it. Whereas like, if I'm not into, you know, knitting, like I don't, I, I thumbs down a couple of videos and I don't get any more knitting videos. Yeah. These guys, there's so much overlap with woodworking and epoxy that I think they just get like hammered. They're just sick of it. And so they have no outlet just to, then just to say how much they hate it. And, I, and I'll say with talking about hate, I, I really like how you, how you do your haters because if you're on youtube you're going to get trolls yeah. he he goes he goes at him or he makes a, a witty comment and then he'll screenshot it and post it to his instagram like it's hilarious oh that hilarious. gets more engagement going too yeah, it's yeah no, it's, uh, we, we we have fun with it or i have fun with yeah. it and, um, i have to tell him all the time to remember that too because you can't take all of that stuff to heart you just can't so i would get i mean like so i'm the trooper comes at him. I'm like, I just want to knife hand him. Look, you know, you're just... knife handing right now. Stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and, and every now and again, they, some of them get to me, but for the most part, it doesn't bother me. Um, Paul Ellis wants to know, what was the avenue that you used to figure out your woodworking style? Making bad stuff. <laughs> just, trial, just trial and error. Trial, just trial and, and error. error. Just putting, yeah, just, just putting stuff out there. And, you know, I, I kind of tried to stay true uh, true to what I like, you know, if, if there's something that I thought was going to look really bad, I just genuinely wouldn't try to make it. Um, usually. And occasionally if I wasn't sure I'd try it and sometimes customers were right and I'd get a new, uh, that was kind of how I made my first black epoxy table. I didn't think it was going to look good. And the customer said, Hey, can I do black epoxy with walnut? And I was like, okay. But in my head, I'm like, that's too <laughs> See, dark. That why would, that, why would anybody want to do that? And now that was like, you know, launch my career and, most all the epoxy tables I still make. Yeah, because that's that, that's a very popular combo. That sounds beautiful to me. Listening to they're, the colors of sharp. it, so um, well, you got a, you got a better a better vision than I did. <laughs> <laughs> but um, David Rizal wants to know what was the most satisfying build you've ever done. Satisfying build, huh? Um, that's a hard question sometimes. Yeah, I, I was really genuinely proud of the dining table I built for our house. Um, that was not super long ago, maybe a little over a year ago. Um, it was just challenging. I wanted to have a book match walnut table. And then I wanted to have, or my, I guess I should say my wife wanted leaves added onto it, but I didn't want it to look like a normal leaf table. And I wanted it to still look like one big table. So I had to kind of come up a, with a way to do these extending leaves and have it still look normal the rest of the year. And mm. it was really challenging. And in the end, it's, I was pretty proud of it. That sounds yeah. really cool. Awesome. Um, I'll do one more real quick and then let you do it. Stephanie Simmons says, did you have any aha moments? For her, it was the spindle sander. She wished she had gotten it so much sooner. So do you have any aha moments that you've kind of had like that? With, with tools or with... Uh, I think just, just in, general, in general, maybe with... Um, well, I, 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 I got one. Is uh, Okay. When I learned about hard wax finishes, and I'm not a, oh. sponsored by anybody, but the like Rubio is what I, what I use now. Mm -hmm. That was just like... 
it was kind of like the before sound in movies and after sound in movies for me. Like, <laughs> we were kind of that, that way with really Rubio good. also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's that? That's good. She said we were that way with Rubio the first mm-hmm. time we used it too. Yeah. Yeah. Like before I was trying to brush on and mm-hmm. dust nib and all that. I'm like, how do, how can I do it? And so that was my big aha moment. Yeah. I like that. I like that finish too. So uh, Rick Anik wants to know, it says, uh, I see you renting for, uh, time for machines. Are you eventually just going to buy the machines like that for your own shop? I, uh, people have, a, sometimes they say my shop looks bigger and sometimes they say it looks smaller when they come in person, but I don't have a big shop. I got as many machines as I could wedge in there right now. Um, I've been looking for probably a year or so on getting a, another, like a commercial space. Um, I still don't think I would get that many tools as that big shop has, but yeah, I'd like to have more of them. Keep yeah. More of it in house. Jason Huddleston. I got to read his question. Okay. He says he's thinking of shaving his head. Will it make him a better woodworker? Because both of y'all's channels has motivated him to give woodworking a go. So uh, you, yeah, I say yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's the only way to go. All right. Know that already. There you go, Jason. You got to shave that <laughs> hair yeah, off get a little now. Scruff on you, and then you're yep. good. Yep. You got to <laughs> shave. Uh, Tom Coons wants to know: uh, Would Cam ever do a collab with Jason Hibbs, aka Bourbon Moth? He lives like like an hour from me. Yeah, oh. y'all are pretty close. Uh, yeah, no, uh, no. We, Jason and I joke, or I guess we we pretend like we have the, this big this big yeah. feud, but we're we're friends. We we mess. Yeah, I'll do something with Jason. That's awesome. That would be cool. Ham and Handcraft, uh, Cam. Any advice for weathering periods of slow sales? Don't. Uh, don't get in over your head if you can help it in terms of um kind of like we talked about paying buying new stuff with profits you know don't have a big commercial space don't have that if if you can afford to do it you know as a as a side hustle and even if you're already going full-time maybe don't get the ten thousand square foot building maybe get a 1500 square foot building don't go too big too soon i guess yeah that's kind of the deal you know don't bite off more than you can chew all at once <laughs> My recipe, which isn't maybe the best for becoming a billionaire, but it's been hold back until I have no choice but to go to the next step. Yeah. I think that's kind of, we we try not to take big risk um, financially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We try to stay on the safer side until we have to do something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about that, Luke Burkseth says, does YouTube pay enough to make it worth diving into the YouTube world? I w- I w- I'll let you answer that. Uh, for me, definitely. Mm-hmm. I think, I, think, I guess things probably different for everybody depending on their how their channel is structured and what kind of content they're making. But I think a lot of times you have to look at YouTube as a marathon. You can't expect, I don't think you can expect to put out one or two videos and then your channel is wow. making you full-time money i think it's just one of those things that's going to take some time and a lot of effort and i think if you just want to generate some sales for your business i think some of the other ones like instagram it'd probably be better just because you can make you can take a photo while you're in the middle of doing something take a photo post it after dinner and that's all you gotta do youtube you gotta make a video edit it do all that yep youtube's a lot of work people don't i don't think they realize how much work goes into a channel that especially yeah. like the size of yours, how many years and how there. much time has been put into that. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you did everything yourself up until just a few months ago. I saw, I thought, I, th- I think I saw you hired an editor. It was only a few months ago, right? Yeah, it was, uh, well, uh, coming up on a, on a year is, I think in May was my, got a full-time video slash editor guy. So it's been, been awesome. But yeah, up to then I did everything. That takes a load off too. And you, you know, great. He's like an actual professional. And so like all these like editing tricks he's showing me like, oh, do you know how much time I spent doing this? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so Mike Kipper has a question for, well, he he's asking it to all three of us. Okay. What's your thoughts on flower pot hangers? Do you think they will sell well? And he says that he made one about four foot tall and two feet wide, but he thinks it might be a little too big. I would sounds, say sounds like big, depends uh, on your area, yeah. time of the year, where you're marketing it to, all of that stuff. You know, in our area, I don't think that kind of stuff sells well here, but it's hard to sell that kind of stuff here. What about you? Yeah, I agree. I think it's, it's location, location, location. You know, mm-hmm. it just depends. On, and, and that but sounds big. Two foot by four foot, a hanging, that just sounds big to me. Well, because you can, 
put, I guess, for uh, me, I'm thinking if it was like Uh-oh. four foot wide, four feet wide, him. and two. Did what'd you me? do? What have you done? I don't know. The screen went black. All right. See if you can fix it. I didn't push it. a button. See if you can fix it. He's still um, there. He's Mike, still I'm not real there. sure. Uh, I think that there's people that definitely want those. I think they're beautiful. Um, you're just going to have to market to the right people, and you're going to have to market it the right way. And you need to check your area and see if that is something that people want or if it's uh, something you might can look into shipping to people. But, you know, I, I think those are can be beautiful little projects. What have you done? I didn't do it. He's back. He's my, back. It was my, my, it's my fault. My battery died. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, he normally pushes <laughs> buttons and messes stuff up. So Yeah, it's usually uh, my fault. Yeah. All that will die that quick, though. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this one lasts. Okay. TJF wants to know, what epoxy brand would you recommend for beginners on a bit of a budget? And he said he knows that budget when talking about epoxy is relative. Yeah. The... Don't buy based on budget, I guess. Buy, you don't have to take my word for what, you know, whichever one I would say, but that's one thing you don't want to budget on because there's so much difference from good to bad. Uh, most recently, I've been using the Super Clear and it had great experiences with it. So um, wait for a sale. They they're, they do aggressive sales from time to time, like 30% off type sales. So if you can catch one of those, that's, that'd be what I'd recommend. That's what Super Clear you said? Yeah, Super Clear Epoxy. So I can't find the comment, but somebody on here says that they're doing their woodworking as a side hustle right now, not um, mm-hmm. their main job. And they want it to go out and buy like everything all up front. And so they said that they feel like they can't kind of get ahead of all of the expense. So they said not to do that, but I, I wanted to go back and find it. So if that was your comment out there, I'm very sorry. I can't find it. So you have recently come out with your own, we were talking about hard wax finishes earlier, but you've come out with your own finish, right? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a nano finish. It goes over your finish. And, and when we talked about the aha moments, I didn't want to seem like I was promoting my project too much or my uh, product too much. So I didn't want to say that one, but yeah, it's a, it's basically, it goes over your, whatever finish you want, whether it's a Rubio or a lacquer a varnish or whatever it is. And so how does that work? So you put the ruby on, let it set for how long, and then you use yours, which is, it's, what is the name of it's N3 or n cube? Yeah, it's, 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 it's N3, yeah, or n cube, however you want to look at it. And, yeah, that, you need your finish to be fully cured. So for ruby, if you use the activator, you know, it's a, it's a weak cure time. And I have a video. You do kind of need to apply it a certain way so you don't remove too much, but you still leave enough of it on there to get the protection. Um, but it's a really simple application. Um you can handle it lightly, you know, half a day later, but then it's fully cured and hard in like seven days. So what makes it so special that you want to use it on top of Rubio? So one, there's, a, there's a few things. and I've been doing a few posts on Instagram about it. I have some kind of fun sample boards that I've been making. Um, the thing I like most about it is the protection. Rubio is okay, but, you know, if you leave a drink there for 15 minutes, you're going to get stained. You're going to, you know, if you spill something aggressive like hot sauce or something like that, it's going to leave marks. And this one, I don't want to say it's bulletproof because nothing is. Nothing's bulletproof. But I did standing beer and standing wine and hot sauce and lemon juice on these sample boards and no marks. And it was just, it was kind of like that aha moment of like, what do I got here? And this was before I came on with the company. They just sent me some samples we had to work together to kind of make it suitable for all the wood finishes, but the protection was great. But the Rubio advantage for me is the sheen because you can take that kind of flattish mattish, like almost up to a semi-gloss if you want to keep adding coats to it. So you get a ton of sheen, a ton of contrast. Uh, The pictures on Instagram, if you want to look at those, they're pretty cool because I did, I taped off sections and you can just see clear as day, like how, how different one side looks than the other. It almost looks like a flag the way the stripes are on there. That's so it, cool, though. And, and they looked pretty before, but then you see it side by side with that, and it's just it's like a like on a photograph when you crank the the contrast and the clarity up on yeah. it. You're like, that's what you do with this nano finish. So uh, na- hold on, Josh Grantham has a question about it. Okay, yeah. um, would you recommend it in a business or a restaurant setting? He says he's thinking of all the cleaning supplies, especially now with or after COVID. So is it something that would be good for that kind of setting? So 
a video idea I've had, and I, I haven't done this yet, and I, I don't like to speak on anything that I haven't personally mm -hmm. tested. So I, can't, I haven't done it in restaurants yet, but there's this really great Mexican restaurant around the corner that has these outdoor tables. And I was thinking it could be fun for a video to go offer to build them like four patio tables and just let them use them for the summer and just, I mean, they can keep them and, see how and then come back at the end of the summer and see how, how well it holds up. So I'll have some updates on that. But that would be a short true answer, test. Yes. That would be cool. So it can be applied to outdoor furniture. Yes, it does help. The top coat has UV inhibitors too. Um, and again, anything outdoors, like you can't just do your deck with it and or your fence and it'll, it'll look like a brand new piece of cedar forever. What? But get yes, it out of your you head. Can better. <laughs> so what finish do, would you recommend going under it? Like what are you, I mean, other than Rubio, is there, is there another the, finish that so far, so far I've tested most of it with Rubio. I've done some samples on water-based poly, but it can go on shellac or lacquer or any of them. It's not going to be as dramatic if you put it on like a gloss epoxy because the epoxy is already so shiny. So you're not going to see like it be a ton more, a ton shinier on the N3 side, but it still gives you that protection and it's a wear layer that you can actually repair. So like it's not scratching the actual epoxy. It's, you know, the, it'll abrade the N3 that you can then repair. Yeah, one. <laughs> Yellow Hammer Woodcrafts wants you to know, Cam, that his wife says your videos are soothing <laughs> and she doesn't even care about anything woodworking. But when it's one of your videos, she will watch them. So <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Uh, Yellow Hammer, that's funny. That's funny. So this is a, a it's a, it creates a hard, harder finish on top, more durable. That's what yes. the, where the nano comes in, ceramic. I'm thinking yeah, so, that new table we're wanting to build. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So it, it, it is harder, and yes, it is, uh, especially than like the, the Rubio, um, much harder than epoxy finishes, things like that. So you can put it over the hybrid, you know, wood, like river tables, wood and epoxy, put it over both sides of that, and you'll never see any difference. Um and yeah, it's, it's one of those, that I'm, I'm learning how to explain it to people and learn how to show people in these videos. Cause it's, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around yeah. until you actually see it. So I'm building an outdoor table. She's wanting an outdoor table on her deck. Uh, no, I was talking about our new dining room table oh, dining that we table. talked about yeah, building work too. because you want two tables. Though. Well, I, I want the outside table first, but yeah, that's what I was thinking. Your, um, your finish would be perfect for both of those. But especially the one inside, because, I mean, we don't, our kids are grown, and so they don't normally have a mess or anything, but I'm hoping grandbabies are, yeah, you know, we're, mm. we're getting close mm. to that, that era. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> that would just, because I want my next table in there to be a table well, my, I keep uh, forever. My, my, my wife loves to entertain. She's, you know, like we said, she's the one that's the more outgoing and mm. she, She's pretty respectful of my furniture, but also that we don't always get coasters at the big family meals. And I sit there, you know, beads of sweat running down my head. <laughs> but we, I did this about six months ago on my table. I added the N3 and I just let people put their drinks down and I, I wipe it up as soon as they leave. I'm still paranoid about it. See, I, I think I would literally not one freak mark out on the table. if I didn't have coasters yeah. under sweating drinks. That's funny. Villa, Villa Navu. Villeneuve Woodworks. Right. He's, he wants to know what the name of it is. It's N3, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Blacktail Studio N3 Nano, if you want to go. I've got it linked in the video description if you want to go directly to there, or you can just go to his website, blacktailstudio.com. Uh, well, oh, they're excited because there's build videos coming. <laughs> hey, do you know that? what time it is? Power tip time. Uh, Mr. Cam, we asked uh, this guest to give us a power tip. It could be about anything. It could be about woodworking, life, uh, helicopter piloting, whatever you want to talk about. Oh, his camera died again. Oh, no. <laughs> he said, I am not he doing said, a power tip. I am not tip. doing a power tip today. <laughs> this is not happening. Oh, that's, that's funny. Can, can um, you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can, we hear, can you. hear you. What the? I, I made sure I got fresh batteries. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, you back. So. I don't know. It's uh, it's actually not the battery. I still had ninety four percent, but it was the uh, like it went to sleep on me. Which oh, okay. uh, yeah. that's what gotta, somebody asked earlier. Nor so Scott, my video guy, was working from home, and uh, he uh, normally sets this up for me. So maybe he does some. Maybe he turns <laughs> some setting on for me. Yeah. 
Um, anyway, sorry, the power tip. I, that, that was perfect timing for me to bail. <laughs> that was hilarious. We covered actually. it normally. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I think uh, a tip, I, I do a lot of social media and it's treated me really well. I would recommend that people do all the social medias, but you don't have to make original content for everything. People think that they need different TikTok content or Instagram or Facebook, all that. I basically make the same content and just spread it out over all of them. And I never get comments from people saying, I saw this over here. Why yeah. don't you do this? Every, they're pretty individualized. So mm -hmm. don't work too hard of making a bunch of different social media. Just post your pictures, post your videos, same places. Yeah, yep. we do, that's a good tip. We do the same and thing. and That's a good a good tip for somebody. Um, somebody on here said... They wanted to know as a high school student what they could do to get their business kind of up and going. I think what you just, that power tip you gave is a good one for them mm -hmm. because they Absolutely. know so much about social media too. Yeah. So um, whoever it was that asked that question, maybe you could think about that. Just get started on social media. Don't, you know. Also, the question is the, is your nano finish food safe? I would assume and so after it's cured it? because Somebody it's on the table. I think it was. Sorry, you, there, oh, sorry. You. It, is your finished food safe? And then she, somebody else asked how thick it is. So it is the hard coat that goes down is about one micron thick. And then the top coat is about three to four microns. So you can't like every wood grain will still be visible. It's not like a lacquer that's thick. As far as food safe, what they're probably mean is food contact safe. And we haven't gone through the FDA testing for mm -hmm. Any of this, so I have to be careful what I'm actually saying. But like you mentioned, basically all finishes once they're cured are food contact safe. So I don't know if that answers this question, but I, yeah. But yeah, I haven't I had it tested so. for. I would assume tables and things like that. It's going to be fine until it's tested. I wouldn't put it on a cutting board. Well, I well I, yeah, this is not. It's not made for cutting boards. So I will right. say, don't put it on a cutting board. You're not supposed to cut on it. Like that'll break the polymer, the chains in it, and that's you're not supposed to do that. But as far as a table or potentially even a serving board that's not mm -hmm. getting cut on. Yeah, most most all finishes are going to be safe, food contact safe. Hey, uh, Damon Barber wants to know what kind of products sell the best for you as another source of income besides your builds and YouTube videos? Do you have plans, board butter, shirts, caps, a different stream yeah, that, of income that does well for you? Um, I got like so many different small streams of income, you know, like I'm sure you do too with affiliate links, you know, things like yeah. that that you don't need a huge following on some of those to just put your affiliate links, you know, and the, I used to post one affiliate link a day in my stories on Instagram, you know, cause at the end of the month, you know, that could be you know, a few hundred dollars or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just am always looking for different sources like that. So I, I, I couldn't even think of all the different revenue sources if, if I had to right now, but yeah, try, you know, a little bit of money from YouTube and AdSense and then the affiliate links and then some small sponsorships, just, wherever you can. And you, you also have a, a course on if somebody's interested in learning how to do epoxies, you have an online course on that, right? Yeah, I did a, I did a, uh, I created an online workshop about a, just over a year ago now on how to build a wooden epoxy table. And that's been done really w well for me because I could make a three hour long, three and a half hour long course. And I have to worry about YouTube saying that's too long. We're not going to show it to people. Right. <laughs> Here you go. I know. I'm oh. sorry about this. That's all right. That's okay. That's all right. It's going to sleep, I think, or overheat, maybe. <laughs> one last one last question, and I'll let you go. No. When you come back. You can go. I think he can hear you. All right. Sorry about that, man. That's all right. So in that, on that same line, how important was having different streams of income in the helping you go full-time as a woodworker slash content Yeah. Creator? So when I decided to quit being a pilot, I, I'd made just about as much um, selling furniture as I was making a pilot, you know, but I was doing that part time. So it wasn't like it was exactly the same. And I knew with social media was starting to do well, that I'm like, okay, I can at least make this much selling furniture. So hopefully with social media, I can do even better. So it was a, you know, real factor into me going full time. There you got a, a glow interview there. Uh, 
Wood Metal Leather and Moto says uh, your epoxy wor- workshop is amazing. Buy it and save yourself time and tons of money and mistakes. <laughs> I, pre- I appreciate that, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And then one last one, and then we'll you let you go. I don't want to. I'm I'm in I'm in no rush. My camera. <laughs> That's is, a southern otherwise. one. Last one. Yeah. One you, last one. You're, you're talking to people in the south. You might be here all night. Yeah. So where did the Black Tail Studio come from? Yeah. So um, I asked that before well, the show mm-hmm. to you. Did you know? Did you have I? Have you I read it, so I I told him. He told me. I so, didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I had no idea. So. so Black-tailed deer is a species of deer. I got a degree in fish and wildlife science at Oregon State. And what I was trying to come up with a name, it just kind of sounds cool, black tail. It does I, sound really it, cool. Then every other name was taken, woodworking and, you know, fabrication or whatever whatever it was. And finally, studio was the only one that was available. So I was like, all right, go with that. It, it works. I, I think it sounds it good together. I asked him, I was like, what is that? And he said they have actually have black-tailed deer. And I was like, what? Because <laughs> we have yeah. white tail down here. What? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I found out before the show, and I thought it was cool too. I don't. I don't even think anybody has a whitetail studio out there yet. See, that would be there's there's an opportunity. There's for an somebody. opportunity there. Nobody else. See, they that. take your logo. And play. No, don't do that, guys. <laughs> <Flip> <laughs> don't do it. that. Don't do that. No, come up with your own stuff. Come up with your own stuff. The crippled stud said they have whitetail up in Maine. They have whitetail in every. They have whitetail in just about every state, but like California and. Alaska and Hawaii, I think. Somebody want to know if we own a lathe? I do not. No. Do you? Own I, I own one. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> That's something I've never been interested in. I, I see these guys. Matter of fact, uh, the guy that edits our videos, Chris, he makes baseball bats, and I'm a f- baseball fan. And I ask him, I was like, man, can you make me a bat and put my logo on there? He's yeah. like, yeah. And so I, I, I would love to. I, I'm, I'm saving that for. I'm saving that for when my Page is getting all stale, and I need to try to do something else new. Start doing so, lathe work. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's awesome. My uh, my boss's husband turns things on lathe. She said that he made uh, two beautiful pens this weekend, but he's not interested in doing it as a business. He just does it for himself. You know, or, it. Yeah, a lot of lathe guys do that. Yeah, he's really good at it, though. They're beautiful. Um. I don't know what Cobra was Cobra Pup was talking about earlier, but it sounded like they were talking about putting both of you on a different month on a calendar. So <laughs> don't know what that was about, but <laughs> I mean ball calendar. Yeah. I don't know. That was I don't know. <laughs> I mean I, that's why a while ago I looked so confused over here reading it. I was like, where did that come from? Anyway. Aaron Carlin wants to know uh, what we're doing for safety as far as sawdust and other hazards. I mean, I got I, don't know, I got dust collection and air filtration and wear a dust mask most of the time. Woodworker's calendar, Cobra. Okay, I got you. Uh, I, I try to be better about the, especially on the chemicals. I feel like I was bad with the respirator around chemicals for a long time, and now I'm trying to default to that more often. It's, it's a learning process. Like when I first started, I didn't think about dust collection, didn't care. That was a lot. It's like buying a refrigerator or a washer and dryer. It's just, and I hated buying that thing. I was like, sure. It's like, it just sucks. But yep, yeah, I agree. All right. Last one. I promise you got one. No, okay. I was just <laughs> <laughs> low fat Logan. He's a long time watcher of the channel. He's always on here. He says, what kind of music do you listen to when you're woodworking? It's a good question because, um, I used to listen to my Pandora station. That's, a lot of classic rock, um, but it's kind of, I've been crafting it for years. So it has, you know, back into, you know, something like the fifties music, you know, Sam Cooke type stuff to, you know, chili peppers and whatnot. But, um, we try to have better shop sounds in our videos now. So I have to, I don't, I don't get to listen to music anymore. Yep. Same here. If you're making a build video, music got to go off. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's, <laughs> I miss mad it at me when, for whatever. doing laundry when he's out there recording or vacuuming. running my vacuum. I'm like, Hey, really? I know that game. It's the leaf blowers. <laughs> the neighbors, the neighbors, and the leaf blowers are what always get me. Uh, or, they, or they start mowing the yard, and you're like, "Stop!" <laughs> I'm trying to make a video. I'm OCD. Yeah. If I see one thing on the floor, I have to go get my little wood floor vac and vacuum light the whole house from <laughs> one end to the other. And he doesn't understand that. So, oh, I would. Oh, I wish I had that. You don't, 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 don't lose that. <laughs> oh, it's bad. 
<laughs> I teach class, and as I teach, I go around and straighten the tables, and the students will just lift their stuff up and keep writing in the air and then put it back down. <laughs> That's awesome. They know. They they understand. Mm-hmm. Okay, man, I, I can't thank you enough for joining us. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And uh, just let everybody know where they can find you and find your new N3 finish. Sure. Um, everything's at blacktailstudio.com. Uh, the M3 will have its own website here shortly, but if you just Google Blacktail Studio or M3 Finish, you'll find it. And same with YouTube, youtube.com slash blacktailstudio. All right, man. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Good night. Appreciate it, guys. All right. See you next month. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, man. Damon, I don't know. Oh, Damon says, welcome to ka chunk ka chunk chunk <laughs> washing <laughs> machine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was awesome. How was that? That was, that was, was awesome. good. Yeah. Well, hopefully hopefully his throat will start feeling better. Saying yeah, he, feel he, he was feeling under the weather. But uh, well, if you don't know, uh, you can check him out. I put his links to his channel uh, in the description. Uh, also uh, put uh, the uh, direct link to that N3 finish if you want to go check that out. And... Uh, Try it for yourself. Uh, we've just got some in. Uh, yesterday it came in. Pam <laughs> sent me a, a, a package of it to try for myself. So she's wanting a new dining table. So looks like that's where it's going to go. Uh, yeah, but I think I want the outside table first. Yes. Yeah. We can order another batch. The crippled stud is correct in Damon because he said it's pronounced washer. Washer. You know. Mr. Tom Coon sent me a three pack of safety glasses and I got them in two days ago, right? Three days ago. And yes, Mr. Tom, I used them today, and they are awesome. He sent me some 3M yeah. safety glasses um, that he likes. They're anti-fog. I'll have a link for them soon, but I don't have them with me right now. But uh, they are great. They're very comfortable. I like that they have a padded nose piece. Most uh, safety glasses don't, and they don't fog up. So I like that. Mr. Michelle Tom, Booth said she's going to go check out uh, Cam's channel right after the live. That's you, good. You will, you will uh, binge watch his content. He is for one, he's a good storyteller, and I think that's what kind of sets him apart from a lot of channels on there and why he has grown so big. Mm-hmm. And also, his work is absolutely beautiful. Like, you look at any of his work that he's done, and it's just, you just look at the thumbnails of his videos, you're like, that is awesome. It's crazy you went from pilot to that. Yep. I mean. Well, you went from trooper to that, yeah. so. I mean, it just depends on, on mm-hmm. where you're being called and, and what what's driving you you know when you find something like he said he wasn't really passionate about being a pilot he just just something he was doing Mm -hmm. and he thought it would be cool and then he turned to woodworking and then when he started which is like a lot of us when you start woodworking you're like oh this is awesome (laughs) and you kind of get hooked in on it you know yep i thought it was super cool steph says and his voice is smooth as butter <laughs> low fat logan <laughs> says do you have a specific website you use for finding daily tool deals across all the normal store sites i use a bunch of them i actually have if you search 731 tool deals on youtube you'll find a video where i went through a lot of it and then of course amazon i got 10 amazon shopping secrets or five amazon shopping secrets i think it was um any, anyway i've used those I, I mean i have a you can ask her every morning when i'm eating breakfast I read my Bible first, mm-hmm. and then I open up a tab called Morning, and it has a ton of websites, probably 15 or 20 websites. And I go through and look for tool deals. I've also got alerts set up that will send me deals on tools. Uh, um, I'm also, being an affiliate with certain companies, would they send out emails that let me know about the tool deals that are coming up and or already happening? And so that's how I find That's how I find Becca says that she loves a storyteller. Connecting with people is huge for business, she thinks. Oh, I, th- I, agree. I think so, too, Becca. I think that's... Um, I teach that way in my classroom, and he knows that. And so I think... I just think connecting with people is the best way you can do it because even if you have something negative going on or if it's something positive, whatever it is, you know, if you're connected through the story somehow it kind of buffers it. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I love it's, the story. Though. There's a podcast I listen to, I listen to several podcasts. One of them is called The Business of Story, if I'm not mistaken. It's a really good podcast. I also highly recommend Business Made Simple, Marketing Made Simple, two books by Donald Miller. Fantastic books if you want to get in. And you can listen to them on audiobook if you don't like reading. But he goes into the storytelling too. And, and we incorporate some of that into our business I need to incorporate it more into the videos. We actually talked about that 
uh, we I took her on a date. We talked about YouTube, and <laughs> we went down about an hour and a half south here because there's nowhere to eat in Monticello. Well, not really. It's the same old restaurants. So we went south to a Cajun restaurant. Good ones. What's well, it on the way back? We were mm-hmm. talking about story for like an hour and a half. We talked about adding story and coming up with yep. ideas and. But yeah, I think it's a good idea. You know, you do. Yep, I think so too. East East Shore Woodworks. Do you have a video of becoming an affiliate for tool companies and stores? I don't. Other than. There's one talk. I, I did a, a live stream talking about growing your Instagram and how important it was uh, if you wanted to start adding affiliates and stuff. I talk about it a little bit in there. Uh, for the most part, just get a website set up and start making content because they have to have a reason to want to partner with you. And so if you've got zero videos on your channel or Instagram or wherever you're, you're posting at or all of them, or you don't have a website at all, I also have a, a website, a video on how to make a website. Uh, on the channel but if you if you don't have any avenue to promote their product then they're not going to want to partner with you and then even still once you get to a certain size some still won't i've been denied by harbor freight like five or six times already and i'm to the point where i'm like i'm just not going to fool with it but you know there's uh just different companies to partner with just look for whatever company you like shopping with whatever company you trust uh you know or want to work with Uh, amazon Pretty much you can get on with them once you start making content. You have to have, again, you just have to have uh, content out there and linking to them already, showing that you, in good faith you're trying to send people traffic to them, uh, to the tools you're using and the products you like. That's the main thing uh, that a lot of people don't probably don't understand is I'm not, I don't link to things that I'm not had already have in my hands and have used in the shop or that I like. And so I get them in the shop, I'll use them, I'll mess with them, I'll do a review on them or whatever. And if I don't like it, I'll tell you in the video I don't like it. And then you'll know ahead of time. There's one coming out very soon. I just got in. It was given to me, and I really don't like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Jopi says, I'm starting, I don't know what this is, K-U-K-S-A-T, K-U-K-S-A-T business. I don't know what that is. Here in Finland, handmade, slowly, and hard work without electric tools. Oh, man. That's commendable. I'm not uh, a hand tool guy. I don't know what that is, what kind of business that is, but it sounds really cool that you're doing that. So but, uh, anyway. So C- Cobra Pup says, what? Harbor Freight, you're going to do this now. So <laughs> I will say this. Just because they have denied me on affiliates doesn't mean I won't link to their stuff. If I find a product I like, oh, I will cut. still send people traffic to them because it's just a goodwill thing to do. If they have something nice that you think is worth promoting, then just... Uh, CP, the tool addict says, you're better off without Harbor Freight. It's a controlling company that dictates the videos. <laughs> they don't dictate Jopey, my videos. Jopey said it's a wooden cup. Oh, that's cool. So cool. That is cool. You got to send us pictures when you do that. All right. All right, Tractor Supply. PJ, Lucia, can you uh, sell some of your products at like our Tractor Supply? Would you if you could? And would you if you could? Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't... We're trying to get into retail on mm-hmm. our board butter right now. I'm in talks with somebody. We don't know if it's going to work out, but we're trying to get that on the shelf. So if it was something that I could get on the shelf, you'd, yeah, you're dang right. It's just another uh, avenue of income like we talked about earlier, diversifying your income. It's, I think it's very important to have multiple streams of income. It's kind of the way we built this business. It's the way Cam has built his. So yeah. Tanner Wilson says when he first saw your page, he thought you were from Monticello, Mississippi. <laughs> Got worried he'd never be able to get businesses. <laughs> There's a Monticello, Mississippi. Yeah, apparently so. I'm from Mississippi. <laughs> Mississippi. I got to look that up. Farmer in the Dale, how do you first start selling your stuff? You have to put it online for somebody to see. It, it's kind of how we did it. We started, I just posted on Facebook Marketplace. Cam said he posted one on Etsy. On so it really just doesn't matter uh, as long as you start putting yourself out there. Take really good pictures. We got a video on um, staging uh products right if you stage those products then it makes it more enticing for your uh, customer makes them want the product tanner i see what you mean i don't think y'all are big enough to have more than one person doing (laughs) anything there (laughs) how many people do 1300 population it's not too terrible that's that's there's a monticello illinois monticello iowa really hey grant glad you're here we got to start over let's call cam back get him start over yep the show can start now Grant, yep. you missed a good one, man. You need to go back and rewatch that one. Yep, go back and rewatch it. 
We appreciate you. We're going to take up much of y'all's time, and uh, we appreciate y'all joining us uh, tonight. And uh, thank again, Cam, for joining us. Just an awesome dude. And uh, I really appreciate what he's doing, and um, I like his work. Hold on. What? I just called it. Sorry, sorry. You don't, make, you don't call the shots. Good night. Sheila K. <laughs> you don't call the shots. <laughs> Says, uh, went to the store and could not find any of those trays you showed in your last video. What tab are they located under? Uh, 731woodworks.com slash store. 731woodworks.com slash store. Went to the store, store and could not find any of the trays. Right there. They're on there. Yep. We got some okay, trays. Okay, but what there. tab? There's no tab. Just go to 731woodworks.com slash store. Okay. And that's the actual store page. Just scroll under. I think there's like three or four rows of plans. And then right under that, you'll see the um, the trays. All right. <laughs> good night, guys. Yeah, good night. Have a great week.